Consider now, this is the greatest verse, I, I think, maybe, in, you know, my favorite verse in this book. Consider now, from this day forward, from the 24th day of the ninth month, it's a spiritual watermark for Israel. It could be one for you. From the day the foundation of the Lord's temple would lay, was laid, consider it. And what's he going to say? He's going to say, when you hear my word, and when you do my word, and when your heart is good, I will start blessing you immediately. Right now. Ten years of wandering and drifting, I'm not going to make you do ten years of faithfulness. When you turn and you line those three things up, I will bless you now. In advance, I'll give you a blessing. This is an advance like you've never had before. Here, listen to this advance. Last verse. Is the seed still in the barn? Yeah. As yet the vine, the fig tree, and the pomegranate, and the olive, they have not yielded fruit. The fruit hasn't come yet, and the seed's still in the barn for other things. But, but I'm going to bless you. Do you believe it? See, he, there's two things here. God's taking responsibility and says, okay, now that you've turned, I'll bless you, but will you trust me? So God does his part, and we have to do our part. Seeds in the barn, will you get out there and sow that seed, believing it's going to change now? People have said to me, I'm just going to trust God with my life. I think you've got to go out and do something. Well, I'm just going to trust God. I would highly recommend that you go do something and maybe look for something. Or, no, I'm just going to trust God. I've I, I got stronger faith than and you're giving me credit for it, Pastor John. I said, well, I don't know. I don't think so. That's not the faith that I see in the Bible. Jesus said in Matthew 6, the same chapter, same section where he says, don't worry for your life, put God first. In that very same chapter, he says, the, God takes care of the birds of the air. And there are certain time people that won't do anything. They just sit back and wait on God to drop things out of the sky. God takes care of the birds of the air. You know, he does. But you know what a bird does all day long? Follow one of them. They don't sit in the nest, wait on worms to fall in their nest. I remember preaching one time and I said, God makes worms stupid. And they stick their head up so the birds can get them. I mean, have you ever heard the phrase smart as a worm? <laughs> no, that ain't, a, that ain't a phrase. That's no, that's, n there's not a culture where that's... Guys, God will do his part. God will do his part. Will you do your part? Will you trust him? Or, or you know what you'll say? As soon as you change my circumstances, I'll trust you. You're going to be waiting a while. can't do that. You can't do that. Do you trust him? Will you trust him? Listen to these last two scriptures. Well, the one thing I worry about here is for people to say, then I, if I'm going to be holy, Pastor, then I can't touch anything unholy. And you know what? We've got a lot of people that, that aren't witnessing and they're, they're not spending time, any time with unbelievers for this, for a misunderstanding of what I just preached on. But there's one area where, where God says, I will exempt one area where a, a clean person can make contact with an unclean person and they not be unholy. Evangelism. Evangelism. Put this up, Luke 15. Why did they hate Jesus, the Pharisees? Because they were self-righteous. Then all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him, that's Jesus, to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man eats, receives sinners, and eats with them. Therefore, he will be polluted. They would never have a relationship with the sinner for fear of being polluted. And Jesus said, hey, guys, you are the pollutants. And then the last one, let's go to Hebrews 7. I love this. Therefore, he that is Jesus is able to save to the uttermost. You know what that means? Forever. He's able to save forever. Who? Those who come to him. Those who come to the Father through him. If you think you're a Christian because you go to church, you didn't come through Jesus. If you, come, if you think you're going to heaven because you read your Bible and give a lot of money, that's, you, know, you have to come through the Son, to the Father, through the Son, since He always lives to make intercession for them. What you believe in cannot be changed, and He's constantly praying for us. That's why your salvation is secure. Listen, for such a high priest, capital H, capital P, that's Jesus, Savior, Lord, high priest, for such a high priest was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, Read the next line, folks. How can you be holy and undefiled? And how can we, it be said that he was separated from sinners when he always was around them? 
Tell you how. Because he was never like them. Jesus and Christians have the Midas touch. But what we touch does not turn to gold. When God touches you, he will make you holy. He will make the dirty holy. And I know I'm not the only one with a dirty past, with an ugly past. And some of you have given up on hope. God will make you holy if, if, you, will, if you will reach out to him and he'll touch you. But if you're drifting, if you're in compromise, wherever you are, turn to him, touch him. Touch him today. And you will see that he has the Midas touch. Something better than gold. Gold perishes, but holiness does not. Amen? Let's pray.